Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another installment of the Squire Affinity Upgrade. We've done a lot of upgrades so far. We've done tuners, we've done the loaded pick guard, we've done the bridge, and we're getting ready to do a few more things to tidy this thing up. I'd like to start out with a review of the electronics and then we'll move on to the back plate, the strap buttons, and maybe a few other things like string trees and obviously setup and strings. Now that all the wiring is done, I just wanted to check my wiring. And so I wanted to also show you the resistances of the Max Cheer pickups. The neck pickup is sitting at 4.67. Middle pickup is also 4.67. And the bridge pickup is 523. Again, these are thousands of ohms and when I put the switch in the middle in between middle and bridge I get about a 2.5 in between neck and middle I get about a 2.4 so everything's working properly I can verify the volume and tone when everything's plugged into an amp I've got a black back plate to match the front and I'm gonna go ahead and install this since I've dialed all my holes the main thing that I want to make sure I can do is change my strings easily. So I like to line up the back plate with the holes on the tremolo more than I care about where the previous holes were on the body. They're close. They're not too far off. But this right here where the strings come through is the most critical part of the alignment. Just like I did on the front, when I set one screw first, it helps hold this in place so that I can set my additional screws. I'll put one more here in this diagonal location before I drill out the other four. I'll do these other four off camera and then I'll peel the plastic. Okay, the back plate's done, but to get ready for setup, you actually have to remove the back plate. So it's sitting off to the side for now. Let's go ahead and do the strap buttons next. I'm going to use a set of chrome football shaped Diodario end pins for this project. Now for any end pin installation, I like to use a set of brand new felts. So I've got two brand new Fender branded felts that I'm gonna install. And the way that you want to install these is that when they're tight, the pin runs perpendicular to the hole that would be in the strap or perpendicular to the body itself. The one on the upper horn installs the same way. Well, I've got these string trees for this thing, and these are kind of like the American Fender string trees. The way that I'm going to install them, I normally install them with the strings on and I just sort of hang them from the strings and draw my dots. But these have these weird posts that are right next to the hole. So I think what I'm going to do is use the original holes as a guide and install them kind of over those to cover them up. But I'm going to redrill a new hole sort of behind where the filled hole is. The way that I'm going to make a template is I'm going to push the string tree into a post-it note and then when it's pushed in I'm going to draw a little mark on the post-it note where the hole was on the string tree and then I'm going to use that post-it note as a template to make a new hole. So I need to poke a hole and then I should be able to use the template to make a little mark. So that sort of tells me where I need to drill my two holes. So I've got one hole that's going to hold the screw and another smaller shallow hole that will hold the post that sticks out on the bottom of these string trees. Now just to make sure I don't do this wrong, I'm going to go ahead and drill out the pilot holes for the screws. Then I'll seat the string trees themselves and by doing that it'll press this little post into the wood a little bit and make sure that I'm hitting the right location there. Yeah, so the location looks pretty good. I'll just drill another small, really shallow hole there and that should seat them just fine. Here's a look at the finished string trees so you can see how they look installed. All right, it's string time and I'm gonna use the same Ernie Ball hybrid slinkies that I've been using on a lot of my builds and we're not gonna replace the nut on this one. I did think about it, but we're just gonna put new strings on it and do a setup. Now I've got this rat's nest of extra string here from where we were installing the strings and I've never really shown this angle before but I thought I'd show this as I cut these off. And I've got this string winder tool and it's got a string cutter on the end of it. And the way that this is designed 
it's extra wide so you can kind of put it right up next to the tuner posts and cut these off and you're not cutting them too short. So here's an example of one. It leaves just a little bit of a nub on the outside so that the string doesn't slip back into the tuner under tension. Okay, so I've tuned everything up. After tuning, there are a couple things I want to point out. First of all, take a note of the alignment of the strings over these Max Cheer pickups. It's just spot on, and that's because the bridge pole spacing is a little bit wider than the other two, and I really like that feature of those. But at any rate, what I was really wanting you to look at was that there's a slight gap under the back of the tremolo, and that's because when you're setting these things up blind, you don't really know exactly where to leave the screws to have the proper amount of tension on the springs, you have to get the strings on so you can really see where that claw is supposed to end up. So we need to tighten the claw screws just a little bit. That means I'll detune just slightly, tighten the claw screws, then I'll put the tune back in and see where we end up. I'm probably gonna just tighten it about a turn, maybe a little bit less, maybe a half a turn. And that's because it's really not that high up from where it should be. Setting the height is really a user preference, but I tend to go for maybe a sixteenth of an inch gap. It's, you know, it's close to a millimeter and a half or so. You don't want a whole lot of space. And with this tremolo, that places it almost level, but not quite. Well, things are looking pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and give it maybe another half a turn. All right, I really like where it's at now, so we can continue with the rest of the setup. Now that I've got the claw and the springs at the right tension, I'm gonna go ahead and put the back plate on. Okay, there's several places we could go next, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and check the neck relief. Well, it's looking pretty good eyeballing it, but let's get a measurement. All right, that looks pretty good. It's right at 10 thousandths, so I'll take that. Again, if there's too much space and I'm measuring with a capo at the first fret and fretting the guitar at the 17th, but if there's too much space between the string and the eighth fret, you'd want to tighten the truss rod. And if there's not enough space, you'd want to loosen it. Now, sometimes I like to let my neck relief set for about a day. And that just sort of makes sure that the wood has moved as much as it's going to move. And this one has been sitting for a day now. So I'm going to go ahead and check the action next. Now the action spec for a Fender is 4 64ths at the 17th fret. Okay, those first two strings are looking pretty good, but I can definitely lower down this next one. Now the Geiger bridge comes with this wrench if you're interested, but it's just a standard wrench. It needs a little bit more. Almost there. Now the next string needs a little bit of love. Basically, these are too high, so I'm just backing off some of the screws here. And I'm way too high on this next one. And way too high on the last one also. Okay, action is now within spec, so I'm gonna check intonation. One of the things that is concerning me about this right now is that my saddle is almost contacting that screw, the pivot screw. And so I wanna make sure that when I intonate this, that I don't run into that screw. Okay, if you hear some background noise, that's just the Peterson tuner whirring in the background. It's a mechanical tuner and there's not much I can do about the noise. So first things first, you wanna make sure you tune all your strings to pitch because you want your tremolo sitting exactly where it's supposed to be in terms of its height. And then I'm gonna tune the 12th fret harmonic of the E string, this high E string first. And when that's perfect, then I'll play the 12th fret fretted note and it's a little bit sharp, which means I can tighten the screw on the back of the tremolo here. And that will only help my situation with that screw in the saddle. So what I'm doing here is I'm comparing the 12th fret harmonic to the 12th fret fretted note. The fretted note being sharp means I can tighten the screw on the back of the saddle. 
Obviously the opposite's true for flat. But now I've got this E-string placed and I can do the rest of these. I'm gonna do those off camera just because of the noise here and it's very just mundane. Well, I realized after doing intonation that I had forgotten to do the pickup height, but that's no big deal. Just grab yourself a 3 seconds Allen wrench and a 5 64ths Allen wrench, at least for these vintage style pickups and fret the guitar on the last fret on the two E strings, then adjust your pickup screws up or down until they just barely touch the Allen wrench. To test your pickup height out, you can do it on the bench. Just see if your pickups are way different in volume. Test both sides. So bridge, middle, neck, bridge, middle, neck, the neck pickup's a little bit louder than some of the other ones, but you know, you can adjust this to taste. All right, and how about a little bit of open chord action to get a little bit of a demo here. That's the neck position. Middle position and now bridge. You can really hear how much brighter that bridge pickup is. All right, and then maybe just a little bit of picking. See how much muddier it gets in the middle and now the neck. And you can tell it loses a little bit of treble each time, but that real neck pickup sound comes through really clearly. It's got a lot of bass in it. an extensive demo but that kind of gives you an idea of the sounds you can get out of this thing what i'm really proud of is just how the whole thing turned out i mean it really came together super nicely i love this tremolo like the strap buttons love the pickups love those pots uh, everything turned out great up here on the headstock i just couldn't be more happy overall Thank you all for hanging out with me on this build and this series. I'm probably going to be doing another one soon, but uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break before I do a Strat again. I think I've got an Epiphone Les Paul planned for a small upgrade, and then we'll probably do a couple more teardown disassembly videos in the interim. If you want to see any of that stuff, be sure you subscribe. Thank you all for the likes and the comments, and be sure to check out my Amazon links, and I'll see you guys next time.